And uh, I'm excited about today. What a privilege it is to be uh, behind this pulpit, man. Y'all have one of the best preachers in the country. Uh, there's a reason he doesn't open it up a lot because he's an awesome preacher himself. Amen. So, uh, you know, when you got when you got the stuff, you don't have to bring in other stuff. But, uh, man, it's so, so glad to be here. And uh, I, I really am excited about today. And I believe God has a word for you. Amen. And uh, would y'all do me a favor and just lift your hands up to heaven one more time. Lord, we thank you and praise you for your awesome anointing in this place. We ask that you would move here in a powerful way. I pray that you would speak to uh, your people today. And uh, I thank you and praise you for your wonderful goodness and mercy. And I just ask, Lord, that you just touch us. God, you move and shape us and mold us today in a better way than we ever have in history. And we'll give you the thanks and praise for it in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen and amen. Open up your Bibles to Joshua chapter 2. And uh, I'm going to read some verses today if that's all right. Joshua chapter 2. And um, I'm going to start in verse 5. And uh, yeah, man, I, you, you could do that. I love you. Thanks, man. Forgot to tell you. I'm, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> amen. Isn't y'all's praise and worship like incredible? Amen. Believe me, man. I go to some churches and it's like, Beulah, you want to sing? I'm like, oh man, it's going to be one of them days. <laughs> so y'all are spoiled, so enjoy it. Amen. Joshua chapter 2 and verse number 5. And uh, I'm going to jump around a little bit in this, in this passage. So just bear with me a few minutes today. Joshua chapter 2 and verse number 5. It came to pass... About the time of the shutting of the gate, when it was dark, that the men went out. Whether the men went, I, I wot not. Pursue after them quickly, for you shall overtake them. Now jump down to verse 15. Then she let them down by the cord through the window, for her house was upon the town hall. And she dwelt upon the wall, and she said unto them, Get thou to the mountain, lest the pursuers meet you. And hide yourselves there three days until the pursuers be returned. And afterward you may go your way. And the men said unto her, We will be blameless that thine oath which thou hast made us swear. Behold, when you come into the land, thou shalt bind this line of scarlet thread in the window which thou didst let us down by. And thou shalt bring thy father and thy mother and thy brethren and all thy father's house home unto thee. Now, uh, turn with me to Joshua chapter 6. I'm going to read a few verses out of there, and then I'm going to just preach to you just a minute. Joshua chapter 6. And then it, uh, I'm going to look at verse 15. It says, And it came to pass on the seventh day that thou arose early about the dawning of the day. I want you all to underline that or mark that or something. That's going to be really prevalent in a, more, in a moment. The dawning of the day. Encompass the city of the same manner seven times. Only on the day that compassed the city seven times. And it shall come to pass at the seventh time that when the police brew the trumpets, Joshua said unto the people, Shout for the Lord hath given you the city. And the city shall be accursed. Even all that therein to the Lord, but only Rahab the harlot shall live. And she and all that are with her in the house, because she hid the messengers as she sent. Lord, thank you again. I praise you for this message today. And I thank you that you'll just touch our ears, touch our minds, touch our hearts. And bring us into a new dimension today of faith in Jesus' name. And the church said amen and amen. Look at your neighbor and say the dawning of a new day. The dawning of a new day. I want to preach a message entitled, The Breaking of the Day. And uh, I believe that uh, right now we need to understand the times and the seasons that we're in. And uh, I really am, uh, I, I don't know if you've been around Dr. Brown much, but I'm sure you have. But uh, I know that he talks about dimensions. But I'm going to know there are seasons that we deal with in life, right? And we need to understand that we're in a crazy time right now. I believe that we're also uh, in the work of grace on the earth. I believe that there'll be a day that God's judgment will fall upon the earth. But right now we're in a major season of grace. 
I believe that God's grace is going to bring us into a new dimension of favor and strength. And uh, we're going to have grace to win the loss like never before. I believe we're going to have the grace to see signs and wonders like never before. I believe that we're going to have grace to see the goodness of God like never before, right? I believe that right now we're in the season of the fruit of faith. Uh, I believe that for the last hundred years, men and women of God have been preaching and, and ministering on faith, and now you're seeing the answers to faith. You're seeing, uh, how, how many know that we're in a time that God wants to do amazing things through His people, but you can't do anything on the earth without faith. And God is raising a generation of people that are full of faith. I believe that this is the end of a season, but a beginning of another season. I believe that COVID has been a crazy season, but we're about to see a season of healing. Can I get an amen? I believe it's been a, it's been a season of division, but we're going to see a season of unity in Jesus' name. I believe it's been a season of frustration, but it's going to be a season of joy in Jesus' name. I believe it's been a season of, of har hardship and struggles, but it's going to be a season of power and anointing in Jesus' name. It's been a season of the enemy wreaking havoc, but it's about to be Holy Ghost time in Jesus' name. I believe we're going to see a generation that's going to experience the Holy Ghost like never before. I believe that we're going to see the salvation of family and friends like we've never seen in Jesus' name. How many know that the enemy's trying to keep them hidden, but God's about to awaken a generation, and we're going to see people tell our family and friends, and the devil's going to wish, you never should have touched my mama, you never should have touched my daddy, you never should have touched my children, you never should have touched my grandchildren, because they're going to be saved in Jesus' name. Hell tried to keep them, but God said, I'm about to bring an anointing on the earth. I'm going to save the very unsavable. I'm going to love the unlovable. I'm going to move the unmovable. And this is going to be the greatest season of salvation we have ever seen. If you believe that, let the devil know you should have never messed with my family and give God a praise. Robo Shataraba. Right now, right now I believe we're in the time of the shutting of the gate. We're in the darkest hour of history. If you see the story of Joshua, there's a transition happening in the story. Right now it's the sound of the midnight cry. As we look around, we can see prophecy being fulfilled on a new level like never before. They say, you know, vaccination, non-vaccination. They say all of these things politically. And I'm just standing back saying this ain't nothing but the Bible being fulfilled. Can I get a witness in the house? I'm not worried about what's happening on the earth. I'm worried about what's happening in the kingdom of God. Because there's some stuff that God is setting the stage for. You can see massive signs of the times. But you have to understand that before Jesus returns, there's going to be a serious revival that's going to sweep through the earth. Before Jesus returns turns we're not just going to have church as usual but people are going to walk in and we're going to praise God just like we did up here today and nobody's going to have to preach nobody's going to have to prophesy but the anointing's going to be so thick people are just going to fall out in the presence of the Holy Ghost I've come by to let you know the devil should have never messed with this generation the devil should have never messed with our moms and our fathers there's a shutting of the gate but there's about to be a trumpet sound and it's the trumpet of revival it's the trumpet of Jesus returning it's the trumpet of power it's the trumpet there ought to be some people in this house that declare war on hell this it may be the shutting of the gate but the trumpet's about to sound look at your neighbor and say he's the God of the night visits Notice he, he visits Jericho in the midnight hours. There's always hope at the time of the shutting of the gate. The difference between Jesus and religion is religion puts up walls, but Jesus tears down walls. Come on, you hear what I'm saying? The difference between religion and Jesus is religion divides, but Jesus brings together. I feel like prophesying. I hear the sound of the dry bones in the valley. They're clattering right now. And God's about to, God's about to clatter the bones. There's an army rising up. 
John 14, 6 in the Amplified says, Jesus said unto him, I am the only way to God. The real truth, the real life. No man comes to the Father except through me. They're about to experience Jesus like never before. I hear people saying, I wish we could just have joy. When you find out joy is not an experience, but joy is a person, everything begins to change. Jesus is the person of joy. He is the person of peace. He is the person of power. There's a shutting of the gate, but there's a new day dawning. There's a brand new sun rising, and there's faith about to explode in the house. This is the real power of grace. Grace will find somebody in the shadows of destruction. Grace is not an excuse to sin, but grace is the thing that finds you when nobody wants you. Grace is the thing that finds you when everybody forgot about you. Grace is the one that finds you when all your friends have left you. Grace is the one that's going to bring this generation back to the power of God. It's never too late for grace. I said it's never too late for grace. I love grace when I hear a preacher preaching. I love grace when I hear grace on a podcast. I love grace when I hear an old song that revives my spirit. I love grace when I see a Facebook Live or an old TV broadcast. I love grace when I hear Joshua, Pastor Josh Palmer preaching on the Holy Ghost. I love grace when I hear that Destiny Point is about to shift this city to another dimension. I love grace. I love grace so listen in the living in the shadows of darkness we find Rahab there's a woman with a family she has, she's a woman with a past she's a woman with a bad name how many know she's a prostitute right she was marked by her choices listen don't think that it's all God Sometimes it's our choices. Huh? Sometimes it's what we're going through. Sometimes also in the shadow of darkness, you find yourself and realize that it wasn't God that brought you here. It was just your bad choices. But one thing I love about Rahab is she had faith in a God she did not know. She had faith in a God she did not know. In Hebrews 11, verses number 31, by faith, it says this, by faith, harlot the Rahab, she perished not with them that believed not. She perished not with them that believed not. When she had received the spies, she had faith. Let me tell you what faith is today. Faith is believing in the dark what God has told you in the light. Let me say that again. Faith means this. Believing in the dark what God told you in the life. See, some of you might be in a dark season, but you need to remember what God told you. It ain't always going to be like this. It ain't always going to be like this. I said it ain't. Listen, you need to understand. There is power in your praise. There is power in your shout. There is power in your dance. There is power. It ain't always going to be like this. I wish we had some people in this house that would get up on your feet, clap your hands, and let the devil know, I still got a praise. If I got a praise, I got hope. If I got praise, I got an anointing. It ain't always going to be like this. Look at your neighbor and say, it ain't always going to be like this, baby. It ain't always going to be like this. I ain't always going to be depressed. I ain't always going to be weary. I ain't always going to be weak. I got the anointing of the Holy Ghost. And when the anointing of the Holy Ghost gets inside of me, I become a new person. It ain't always going to be like this. Mm. Rahab's life was a mess. She was used up, right? She felt like she owed somebody something every time. Her home and family was marked by the choices that she had made. But she had faith in a dark time. Church, I want to encourage you. You got to have faith in a dark time. Right now it looks like that everywhere we look, it's miserable. People are miserable. They don't know what side they want to be on. 
But I'm going to tell you, there's always the side of Jesus Christ. Can you imagine Rahab? I believe she could see Jordan from Jericho. Come on, listen to me now. She can see Jordan River from Jericho. She sees the people of God shouting. She sees the people of God dancing. She sees the people of God. So here she is behind the walls at the shutting of a gate. And all she can see is what looks like a distant future in Jericho. And I tell you, she had faith of the God of Israel. She said, I need a remedy. I need something that's going to change my life. You know what I love about Rahab? This is why I think God cared about her. She was honest. Huh? She was honest about herself. And no, no, notice what else. I figure something else about Rahab right here. She didn't blame nobody else for her mess. Nobody go help me preach today. We need to quit blaming the government on us. We need to quit blaming the system on us. We need to quit blaming everybody around us. You're here because you chose to be here today. You're, if you're online, let me tell you, God's going to deliver you right where you are because you're still praising a God. You made it here. You may have made some bad choices. Oh, but grace showed up. And when grace shows up, everything changes. I want to declare over you today, there is a people, it might be a dark hour, but there's a praise in the dark. Gosh. Now watch this. Many of us in this room... We need help in finances. We need help in health. We need help in our marriages. We need help in our families. We need help in our church. We need help in government. We need help in every single area of our lives. Can I tell you, there is hope in the darkness. The spies give her an instruction. I want you to catch this now. She said, hang a red cord outside of your window. And we're going to know that's the, that's the room we save. We've been taught in history that every time you see red, it's an application of the blood. Can I tell you that we need a new generation of blood pleaders? Oh, y'all ain't going to help me preach today. I know, I know we believe, listen, I'm not talking about voodoo. I'm not talking about magic. I'm talking about when God said, if you'll just take a lamb and you'll put it on the doorpost of your house, he said, I'll let the death angel pass you by. Can I tell you, we've got the blood of the lamb of Jesus Christ. He's put on our hearts. And when the enemy shows up, he's got to pass you by. I wish we had, see, my mama bled the blood on the toaster. She bled the blood on the car. She bled the blood on me. She bled the blood on my children she bled the come on do we got some blood pleaders devil you ain't going to get another generation because we got the blood we still got the blood we got some blood we got some power we got some anointing you ought to give god praise if you still believe in the old-fashioned blood there's hope in the darkness now watch this she applies the blood to the doorpost rahab is spending her night her last night in Jericho, wondering, dreaming, could chariots pick me up in the morning outside of these walls? Is there any way I can get out of where I'm at right now? She's now living in the shadow of a scarlet thread. She's living in the shadow of a scarlet thread. And I believe she started to ask the question, how long will the darkness last? How long? Anybody ever been there? How long? When is God going to do what I ask him to do? How long? How long? How long do I got to praise you before I feel your presence again? How long do I have to give before I see a harvest? How long do I have to pray before I see my children take a turn for the better? How long? I know some of y'all righteous people ain't had no how longs, but I had some how longs. Uh, uh, wondering, waiting, just needing God to do something. I believe we get like Rahab and we start wondering. I got, uh, I got sick with COVID last year. But uh, what was even more trying than that was uh, uh, Pastor Josh is a pastor and I've been a full-time evangelist for going on 15 years. And uh, man, God has 
been so gracious to us. But in, from March to like the end of August, almost the end of August, man, it was a nightmare. We had nine cancellations from March all the way through mid-July. And uh, man, we were, we were I, I looked at my wife and I said, baby, we're going to have to believe what we've been preaching for the last 10 years. <laughs> We're going to have to believe God for everything that we've been preaching for the last 10 years. Because now we're going to have to, we're going to, you know, we told everybody we've got a Jehovah Jireh. Now we're going to have to believe the Jehovah Jireh. Huh? You get nine cancellations. And, and uh, not that I put everything in my ministry, but, but it, it, it's how we make our living. We preach the gospel by faith and God provides. And uh, man, my faith was rocked when churches weren't calling me. My faith was rocked when I, 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 I'm pre, I mean, I'm a preacher. I'm not a teacher. I don't have, I don't have to, I don't have Pastor Grace's Josh, you know, to get up here and come on everybody and love on you. I, I, I'm not a teacher. I'm a preacher. So I'm, I'm like wore out and I get sick. And I don't know about you, but there are times I know God is there, but I want to feel him. <laughs> And what do you do when you know he's there, but you can't feel him? I guess I'm not talking to this section. Let me talk to this section. Come on, you know what I'm talking about? When you want to feel his presence, but you can't feel I'm not talking to this section neither. I'm talking about when you're praying and crying. I ain't talking to you neither. I know y'all ever, y'all ever been there. I, I like this section. I'm starting to like them. I'm starting to like them. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Huh? You frustrated. You know God is there, but you can't feel him. Uh, but can I tell you that sometimes you got to get in the midnight hour like Paul and Silas. Baby, I don't know where you at. I'm in prison. I feel like I'm in chains. But I come to tell you, God's still a good God. I come by to tell you, he ain't never going to leave me. He ain't. Not. I wish we had some praisers in this house that might feel like you're in the midnight hour. But you need to let the devil know I still got to praise in a God who will show up. Uh, don't praise him for what he just did in your past praise him for what he's going to do right now don't praise him for what he did in your past praise him for what he's about to do five years from now just go ahead and praise him because he's a good God you ain't even got to have a reason to praise him he's just that good could y'all could y'all ever imagine Paul and Silas y'all ever thought about that story see I'm ADHD and when I read the Bible, my mind goes like 50,000 miles a minute. Can y'all, now, y'all all get dumbed down to Paul and Silas in the prison. Man, I'll, I've often thought, what kind of songs would have come out of that room, right? What kind of stuff would have had to, but I want to focus, just, just take your mind on, on, on heaven just for about 30 seconds. Could you imagine what Jesus and God were doing right there at that moment? There's nothing going on in heaven except the angels singing. But can I tell you that here he is playing golf, right? Jesus is chipping on hole number nine. He gets a, he gets a little chip, and you know it's a hole in one, right? He just, he just playing with everybody. You know what I'm saying? Him, Moses and him is playing golf, and you know God is playing. Jesus is playing. Every shot, it's a stroke. I mean, bam, hole in one. Moses is still on stroke number seven. But here Jesus is a hole in one, right? And here, here you got this going on, and all of a sudden Jesus drops his putter, and he turns to the father and says daddy do you hear that's coming out of the north quadrant over here I hear Paul and Silas they're in prison they're beat down and I believe that's when God up got off of his throne he stopped his feet and the earth shook they walked out of prison because somebody dared to praise God in the midnight hours of their life I feel a breaking of a new day getting ready to happen to destiny point could we get some praisers to exalt the Lord and let the devil know I feel feel a dawning of a brand new day. High five your neighbor and say, I want to be on the winning side. Are you able to pop up Colossians 1.16 for me up there? Are you able to pop that up there or not? Colossians 1.16. That's, that ain't no worries. No worries. It says, for by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, Thrones, dominions, or principalities or powers, all things were created by him. So we know that God is in charge of four realms. He's in charge of thrones. 
He's in charge of dominions. He's in charge of principalities. And baby, he's in charge of all power. Are y'all here to let me, let me, let me, let me just slow it down. He's in charge of thrones. That means the devil ain't got no throne unless God says so. That means he's over dominions. That means every dimp and de- every imp and demon has to flee in Jesus' name. He's in, he's in charge of all principal. That means no cancer can live in you. No diabetes can live in you. No sickness can live in you. No principality can attack your body because you've got the blood and he is assured in charge of all power. So watch this now. Rahab is in the city. At the dawning of the day, the trumpet sounded. At the dawning of the day, sorrow endured for the night, but joy comes in the morning. Can I tell you that some of you have been at midnight, but there's a trumpet sounding at the dawning of the day. Y'all got to hear me. God is about to do something for you. There's a breaking of a day. There was a Jesus dried blood on the hill and the devil thought it was over. Come on somebody. Hell's having a party. We done killed him. We done crucified him. He's dead. But what they forgot was uh, he was walking amongst them in the spirit realm. And the Bible said he walked down to hell. He knocked on the door and said devil, I'm here to get the keys to death. I'm here to get the keys to the grave. It might be midnight but tomorrow I'm getting up tomorrow I'm getting up somebody ought to let the devil know he got up he ain't in the tomb he's not dead he's not weary he's getting up he got up watch this now religious people are very kind every kind there are many of those who tell us it's just a history book there are many of those that tell us Well, Jesus is just a fictional character. Jesus is not a a real prophet. He's just a prophet. But I want to tell you, they've forgotten the story and the tie to Rahab. You'll find out in Matthew chapter 1 and verse number 5 that Solomon beget Boaz and Rahab beget Boaz. Solomon and Rahab... They were the lineage of the line of Jesus Christ. (laughs) Rahab was in the shutting of the gate. But God used a harlot. One that nobody wanted. One that nobody cared about. One that nobody thought was worth anything. But she's the very one that stayed alive. She had to stay alive because Jesus was in... She, y'all are not catching what I'm saying. She had to stay alive because, uh, you see, uh, the reason I'm keeping Rahab alive is there's a bigger plan than just Jericho. Jericho is just the starting point. But see, I'm going to need Jesus to come out of Rahab so Crystal can be saved, so Jennifer can be saved. So, oh, y'all, aren't you glad that? Aren't you glad that God didn't give up a prostitute woman behind the city, but God woke her up, brought her out, and now we've got a Savior named Jesus because at the midnight hour at the shutting of the gate there was a woman that kept by the scarlet thread her name was Rahab she went like a woman from nothing and birthed a savior in her lineage she looked at utter darkness for a complete generation that needed hope when everybody forgot about her God was the one that said if you believe me I'll bring you out. I want to tell you today that there are many of us that are in the midnight hours of our lives. But it's a breaking of a brand new day. It's a breaking of, I believe it's a breaking of the day for Columbia. It's a breaking of the day for Destiny Point. It's a breaking of the day for your life. It's a breaking of the day for your family. It's a breaking of the day for your children. It's a breaking of the day for our nation. See, the nation, listen, the reason that you got to know demonic forces are against our nation right now is because we preach the gospel for over a hundred years. And America is not going to go down because we've got seed in the ground and we've got pastors like Brother John. 
Joshua that are not going to back up. They're not going to put up. They're not going to shut up. We're safe because we've got men and women of God that are still preaching the gospel. America, Bill, we revived again. We'll experience revival one more time. This is our season for God to bring us at the breaking of the day. My last encouragement to you today is this. As the band gets ready to come up and they begin to get ready to play for us. This is what I want to tell you. You don't need a system. You just need Jesus. You don't need a people. You just need Jesus. You need a pastor that preaches Jesus. You've got one. You need a generation that still believes that we're all right because God is in our lives. I want to tell you this by encouraging you. You might be at the darkest place of your life, but there's a brand new dawning of a day. Don't be depressed. Don't be discouraged, but be encouraged. Right now, it is the hardest generation in history. The hardest. We're frustrated. We're scared. We're bothered. Come on, you. anybody ever been there? I'm like, God, what's going to happen? What's going to happen? We act like plastic people with plastic problems. Like nobody goes through anything. They lie. They lie. I'm telling you, it's a crazy season. But there's always at the shutting of a gate, there's a rehab somewhere. It's got to cry. Can we be spared? Will things be different? Will things sound different tomorrow? Right now, will we be the ones that make it out of this city when everybody tells us we're not going to make it? I want to encourage you today and strengthen you in the name of the Lord and tell you it might be midnight, but the breaking of the day is coming.